This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, the show where we chat with people in and around indie wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, a video producer around it and involved with indie wrestling.us. Uh, when we're back at it, of course, in the new studio here in uh, the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh. Uh, and uh, we talk about that on the Patreon and on the other Wrestling Mayhem Show all the time when we have furniture moving that's distracting me uh but check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow.com subscribe to the indie mayhem show on itunes stitcher spreaker iheart radio and of course video versions on the wrestling mayhem show youtube and facebook page of course drop us a line to let us know any any indie wrestling you think we should check out anybody you think we should have on the show at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or 412-206-WMS0. And uh, anyway, we've or even on Twitter at Mayhem Show as well, or on the Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, we have had a pretty good track record this year in 2017 of uh, people that have been requested. And if you look on our Facebook page, we have scheduled out throughout August and the majority of September at the time of this recording. Uh, with people coming in studio and uh, you know in person a- as part of the show from the Pittsburgh area, somebody's coming in from Ohio, uh, so we're going to have a lot of fun with that. So keep an eye there on our events section so you can see exactly what's going on. And we do invite people to come in as a studio audience to be part of the show as well. Uh, just let us know in those Facebook groups if uh, if in those Facebook events, sorry, uh, if you want to be a part of it, and so we can make sure we have enough seating for everything and can accommodate you. Uh, but we look forward to that and maybe have a live studio audience aspect this week. We have with us in studio Billy Ruxpin, just several months into his career. I think I've seen at least 50% of his matches so far, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> uh, Julius, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Uh, excellent, excellent. Of course, Billy, uh, if you want to check out, if you're checking this out later, he did join us on Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, 581, uh, talking about some general wrestling and everything. So please check that out as well uh for some fun uh but uh well first of all we kind of like to kind of like break the ice question um what was kind of your first memory of wrestling that maybe uh that maybe hooked you um oh, i think i i was actually like kind of a late bloomer when it came to wrestling i think i started like in middle school mm-hmm. maybe a little earlier and uh the first ever show i saw was a smackdown and it was actually john cena's debut oh geez yeah it was because the funny thing is uh kurt angle came out and my dad was telling me like yeah he he's he's from pittsburgh he went actually went to mount lebanon and i'm just like what oh he's already already my favorite wrestler <laughs> and you're from here in the south hills and then like so you're very like aware of the mount lebanon kind of thing right yeah i went, I went to mount lebanon high school i've lived in beachview pretty much all my life mm-hmm. and uh and then j- this guy in red trunks came out it was like oh your name is john cena and i started watching i think smackdown and then i started watching i then i found out there was another show raw <laughs> I, I, something I, called monday night raw yeah, yeah. you might have heard of it i've watched i've watched smackdown before raw did it, and yeah i got hooked on it and then mm-hmm. like later on in college i started watching like the british wrestling and um and the funny thing is my first indie show was actually the first show i had to help when i was training yeah i, I was a very very late bloomer on that one oh, wow yeah i've i've always had i've always had jobs that worked in at weekends mm-hmm. so it's like i never really could get out get out to go to shows and stuff believe mm-hmm. me i wanted to though mm-hmm. so how did that transition happen of, of going to to watching this on tv to i want to try my hand at, at, at seeing if i can do this thing oh i don't um i don't know i think i just had an epiphany one day mm-hmm. and i was just like oh i could do this stuff <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sure. The, the 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 deadly day that has that has <laughs> done in so many uh, uh, attempted pro wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it was actually like three years ago. I was thinking about training, but 
I didn't really have the money for it mm -hmm. at the time. Um, like honestly, if everything went like straight, like where I wanted to train and stuff, I think I would have been like two years into my career. Mm -hmm. No, but then I finally got a full time job, and then I finally got the training, and that's what happened mm -hmm. J January two thousand fifteen, sixteen, sixteen. That's right, yeah, because it started uh and uh, and I was I was still in the mode of yeah i could do this stuff and then two months into training i was like uh this is a lot harder than i thought <laughs> but i don't i don't regret that year of training mm -hmm. yeah and, and that the build up to it granted yes it was money issues at the time but like mm -hmm. it was worth the wait awesome yeah. Uh, so, so they say you had some issues, you know, kind of getting into it and everything. But is there a, a moment where it kind of clicks over and says, "No, wait, I can really do this." Like, kind of a, a re, I can do this because you, you kind of get, I think you kind of get slapped in the face a little bit at first when you start doing it and realizing how hard this thing is, right? Oh yeah, hmm. yeah. It, uh, uh, learning bumps sucked, <laughs> as always. Of course. Um, but the, but I started like I was just like I was into like yes I can do this I can do this then like the first month I was like oh okay this is difficult second month I was like oh, okay I'm starting to regret my decision I I guess and then like we had we started having practice matches mm -hmm. and it was you know, actually like my match was okay obviously not great because we're training but it, like. And then I decided, okay, I'm I'm starting to learn learn a little bit more and more, and it, it progressively got better mm -hmm. after that, like my mindset. So it obviously ups and downs mm -hmm. with it, but in in the long run, <laughs> I'm working now. So absolutely, uh, you debuted. Like I said, there was you had a really interesting debut. Oh yeah, okay. I can't see that. I can't say that I've ever seen a wrestling debut like this. No oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> so there was a series of promos. Yeah, with the sexy talented dudes. Which, if you listen to Indie Mayhem show, a wrestling Mayhem show, these guys have been around forever, um, as far as our stuff goes. Right. Um, oh, well, there they are, right there in the picture. I mean, that really explains it. There's a Goonies picture with everybody's head pasted on. Yeah. Or no, they actually took that picture. Uh, <laughs> but um, so, you know, kind of a band of misfits thing. And they're doing these videos where Corey had a friend. Yes. That, I don't know. Seems like that imaginary friend thing. And, and and we talked about, I think we've mentioned this on Mayhem Show or Off Air, that the first, like him coming out, and I'm sure you were around, to, you know, I got to be honest, trainees kind of blend in <laughs> when, when I'm working on the shows, working them. Uh, but uh, him coming out of the curtain and saying, I'm real on the reveal. Can you can you talk to us a little bit about going into that and and how Billy Ruxpin kind of came about um, behind the scenes there? Like, like how did we, we land on Billy Rux. <laughs> right. Um, well, Billy uh, Ru well, it's, what, what is Billy Rux? But first, kind of explain the character a little bit, too. Billy Rux is kind of like, well, he came from Corey Futuristic's mind. So he's already, you know, mm -hmm. off. Yeah, yeah. And um, I guess he's just like the child. He's like a, a child that never really had. Um, He's he's stuck in a child's mind, but he's an adult, mm -hmm. per se, and he's that's basically it. Like mm -hmm. he's just a child. Like, I mean, last 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 show, IWC show, he came out pretending to be a superhero <laughs> with a blanket wrapped around his neck. Yes, he did. Yes, so, he did. So, I mean, who? What kid does not want to be a superhero? Mm -hmm. I mean, you come out. You're you're way bigger than the rest of the uh, 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 STDs. Uh, yep, by like a foot uh, <laughs> in most cases. You have the most probably unflattering pinstripes going on. <laughs> so, oh come on, people love the pinstripes. Oh, they're amazing. No, don't get me. They're amazing. <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> and, and and it definitely evoked a little bit like, you know, I always get worried when, when this comes about. I, I evoked a little bit of a Eugene vibe to it. Right. It, but again, like that that, is, the child, yeah. the child like kind of kind of feel yes. to it. Right. Yeah. So, I've, I've gotten a good bit of, you know, a recycled Eugene. Yeah. Yeah. I deal like 
I mean, like, yes, I, I get it. But at the mm-hmm. same time, he's a, he's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Well, even if, I mean, it's not like nobody's ever done, like, how many cowboys are in wrestling? <laughs> you know, it's not like, yeah. you know, and, 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 and I don't haven't seen too many Eugene type characters either. Right. Right. So I think it's interesting to take take kind of a spin on it. Like, how are you approaching that, you know, to to be basically not Eugene, I guess? Um, well, that's that's the thing. I'm like, I'm not I'm trying not to be Eugene. Mm-hmm. No offense. Mm-hmm. But like it, it, it's definitely difficult to try to be something that's could be considered Eugene, but mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. That's what that's why like I try not to be Eugene. Like I'm I like people still still think they remember I'm Corey's imaginary friend mm-hmm. and not just some weirdo they <gasps> found <laughs> they found in an alley. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like you want to be a wrestler? Sure. <laughs> so like it is difficult, especially I'm only five months in. Mm-hmm. It's especially it's difficult to try not to be somebody and that's that's why i'm that's why i'm trying not to be is eugene but at the same time i want to be billy rockspin i want people to remember oh yeah that's billy rockspin's thing which sticks out in a world where everybody wants to be the rock so or cm punk or something right right? so um i i I think as i mentioned earlier you have this interesting style that seemed like i I called it interesting the wrestling style, the wrestling version of um, um, uh, Drunken Ninja Master, uh, yes. where you that's actually a lot better. Like you, you a lot better than I stated before, or, or, or oh, I didn't hear you say it before. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> good. Uh, because you you kind of have this like stumbling off balance look to when you're out there, uh-huh. and then you know chris when you pull a move off like you i think you were talking about how when you take pictures because the way you move out there like it's like the most like i turned out to be like clay (laughs) yeah yeah exactly like everything's moving and doesn't settle and you did just it's all in action in a picture so yeah uh can you talk a little bit about that you know is it just you know are you you know are you how how is it to kind of look uncoordinated but <laughs> not be i guess is the way i'm trying to say this um that's what the, i I've, i would never think billy ruxpin as someone that's like you know sit still like mm-hmm. a child yeah so you think like oh you do you just see him like flailing around dancing you know doing something with his hands float. and but when it comes to it when it comes to it i guess you just Actually, I can't really explain the Chris part. I guess it just happens happens that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like the ch- the childlike movements, the you know the goofy smile and everything, the, the hair. Mm-hmm. And, but the Chris part, I mean, like it's just it just comes at, comes as it is. I guess you just you just you just, you just kind of uh, uh, roll into it from the training from there. Yeah, you know, and the character kind of wraps around it. Yeah, I, think, I guess so. Yeah. So, uh, there was a question. We we were talking. You know, of oh, course, geez. you had a you had a good you had a good what you learned uh, on on wrestling this week on Wrestling Mayhem Show about about getting sunburnt. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> during the course of a match. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, but but I think along with that was like, what is your craziest match? Which I think just happened. No, no, actually, recently was... happened. Right. So so you debuted in February. It is now uh, beginning of August as we're. First day of August as we're recording this. Yes. Um, and already you're wrestling with uh, IWC, International Wrestling Cartel, of course, and uh, uh, Black Black Diamond Wrestling, who yes. is mostly out of uh, the West Virginia Panhandle. Of course, we talked to Jake Garrett. Like Upper Upper Panhandle. Ohio Valley. Yeah, yeah Upper Ohio Valley. Um, and we talked to Jake Garrett about that promotion as well. Um, can you, uh, what is your craziest match? That, let's go with the question. Oh, uh, by far. It's the Lego death match <laughs> that, <laughs> that I had in July. It was like the 15th or something. Mm-hmm. It, it was the same day as Stomp Out Cancer. Right. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> well, to start, uh, we had to build stuff for the match. 
I made a line of Legos this is before the show. Uh, this is or, before, or yeah. in front of fans because I mean, either would be entertaining. Probably. Oh, there was like fifteen people there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I made a line of Legos and I called it a puppy. <laughs> And they knocked, they they broke my puppy, and then I was just like, and then I was just like, my puppy, and then they beat the crap out of me. So, um, I took, I was, my head was stuffed into a tub of Legos. Oh, it, it was, it wasn't that bad. My hair helped me. It was, yeah, yeah. Like, it was, it, it kind of just like I dove in like top of the head first, so like my hair was like taking it. And and this is when I I forget who else was talking about this match too. Uh, recently at a show and there there was like hey you know like how you step on a lego when they've been left out yeah yeah oh yeah, it sucks <laughs> yeah yeah try the rest of your body uh when this happens um yeah i i i took a drive-by uh neck breaker <laughs> to start Jeez. to start yeah. you started the match with that no 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 not to start oh, the no. match but that was like my first bump off of there okay and then the second one was i i have that my splash mm-hmm. i missed and i went right on the legos mm-hmm. and then i think i they put legos in my mouth and then super kicked me <laughs> <laughs> well at least it's not tax <laughs> and i i honestly if i was going to take a bump on tax i'd rather take that <laughs> yeah yeah exactly well you'd rather take the tax than Legos. Then Legos. <laughs> um, there was another thing where we were taking their manager. We threw him in the back of uh, a car and put jump cables on him. Uh, we, we did the. Well, Chess was trying. Yeah, I was. In, I was in the match with Chess Flexer. You know, mm-hmm. the brainchild, of course. Uh, and <laughs> I, he did, he, he was having trouble because he kept squirming. So I grabbed the other jumper cable, posted like on his balls. <laughs> <laughs> he got the t- he got the nipples and we just shut the door and we just went back to you know the match the great match that we were having <laughs> was it this was at like the wasn't this at the ohio like unaf- like building blocks museum they couldn't the even, lego the Le- <laughs> finger quotes lego yeah, yeah of course <laughs> um how do how does this, how does this happen? <laughs> how is the question? I have. I've got two words for you: yes. chest flexor. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it happened. Because the funny thing is, the the, the Black Diamond show before that mm-hmm. was um, we were like he was he said Lego death match, and I was like, oh, man, all right, ha ha ha, you know. And then, and then we got we got to the show, and we we're like, all right, we were like, okay, we gotta make we gotta make a Lego table, and I'm like. Wait, we're not actually having that Lego death match, are we? And he goes, "Yeah, you think he was kidding?" I'm like, "Yeah, I did." <laughs> and then we got through it, and like the match wasn't uh, that bad, mm-hmm. actually. Like it went, it went fine. I'd rather take tax. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I don't know if anything else hits that hit, hits that that kind of spot there. But is there anything else that you know? Um, you know, you you made this decision, the, the the this move. You're you're into wrestling six months here. Is it is it what you expected other than like a death match? No, <laughs> not at all. You know, I would, I have never thought I would be. You know, four months in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're gonna bump on Legos. Mm-hmm. Cool, <laughs> great. But the match was fine. It was, yeah. it, I'm not like you know shitting on it or anything. Yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. was it was actually probably one of my favorite matches that i've done so far in my career nice so nice um i I know i know watching iwc or or i'm sorry editing iwc or filming like uh uh, billy rock has been getting a lot of great reaction out there too really (laughs) (laughs) i've seen it Uh, rob you've seen it too right i mean uh, like like people are are getting into i'm gonna say like the the really wasn't like like uh, i mean like i am surprised by that but yeah I'm happy yeah. about about that too. I'm not like, are you serious, people? Yeah, it's, it's not yeah, that yeah. really. It's like it's like I'm like really wow, that's awesome, good. I mean, I think the jokes are going over well and everything. So like, it's it's a nice it's a nice addition to the show, oh, you know. Because nice. you <laughs> wait, what was that? I was worried. <laughs> you were worried. Because I'm the, a warrior. That's my thing. Because STDs. I mean, we're talking about IWC, which like just had Adam Cole and Jonathan Gresham. Right, and then there's the STDs. Yeah, like they have their position on the show. 
Yeah. Right. And and like they kind of break that up a little bit. It was actually um, considering I've been training for a whole year Mm -hmm. and finally having a match Mm -hmm. in court time Mm -hmm. where you where I've been most. Mm -hmm. It was actually pretty cool because technically it's the home of IWC. Right. And it was actually it was like it was almost surreal because like I've I've been there 10, 11 times, you know, being under the staff shirt. And to be in the front of the home crowd, it was scary and also like surreal at the same time because I want, I performed in front of the home crowd. A bunch of my friends were there and everything. Like this one guy, this one guy, his name is his name is Chris. He uh, he was at my debut, and he <laughs> I remember on the DVD I was watching, and he goes, "Dick Deep Billy," and I'm like, "Oh Christ, <laughs> <laughs> oh man." <laughs> This is gonna start. <laughs> That's right, because you've done you've done like Clearfield. You've done. Did you do Meadville? Battle Royal. I I did the the pre show Battle Royal, mm-hmm. and then I ran out to help Chest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I kind of like did a, like a battle cry with my freaking the with the <laughs> with the, with the the kendo stick. That was fun. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, well, hey, at this point, you know, I, you know, you say you catch up with wrestling as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you watching these days? Is there anybody that you're paying attention to, show or person wise, um, uh, that maybe just has your attention, or maybe you're drawing some ins- inspiration from? I'm I'm watching a lot like NXT because it, it's available all the time, anytime. Mm-hmm. And um, they sound like a WWE Network commercial. It, I was gonna say only on the WWE Network. <laughs> Um, I was, I'm watching a lot of British wrestling, mm-hmm. like WCPW Progress, uh, Rev Pro. I've, I've always liked the British style of mm-hmm. wrestling, which is, it's like the perfect amount of strong style, technical and comedic. Okay. Which I, I like. I was going to say how much of that kind of comes across. Like, do you, do you, do you feel like your character is kind of your version of a Jack Gallagher kind of situation? Or? Oh, no. <laughs> No, he he looks suave. I look like a like a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all no, right. no, no, no problems with Keith Hot. <laughs> I, I, was, I was trying to figure out how to bridge that over there, but uh, isn't that his splash name? Hot, hot, I think it hot is. Mess yeah, or Keith Hot. Uh, but uh, awesome. Uh, but but the, you you do see a lot of like that British like kind of crossover thing being being a lot of what you try to bring in, or it's something I do want to learn. Mm-hmm. And like my fear in the future, mm-hmm. I like I actually do. Hopefully, in a year or two, maybe I do plan on trying to get to Progress's dojo mm-hmm. and learn the British style of wrestling. Good, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like, You're not gonna I, go Lucha Libra with uh, DJ Z or anything like that. Uh, I mean, like a couple things here and there, Lucha Libra. I would like to learn. Not no springboard anything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cause, the, cause that was just basically me. Like I'll jump and then I'll like spring off of my stomach and then fall. <laughs> it would just, it would just be awful. It would be great to see Billy Ruck's been trying Lucha Libre though. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> at least the attempt by, by, by Billy Ruck's been. Yeah. Uh, at the very least. I mean, I could have, I wore a wrestling mask in Clearfield. You did? You did. <laughs> no one knew it was me. Obviously. No idea. No idea. <laughs> Um, what, you know, this part of your career, what is the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling? Oh, the best is seeing different, uh, the different gimmicks and people other than, cause I know there's people that just watch WWE mm-hmm. and it's just them. Yeah. I, I like seeing different people. Uh, and different like tries to be like oh yeah i remember him from this show or i remember him from this show like i said i'm i'm relatively new to the indie scene as a person mm-hmm. so i haven't really been able to go to indie shows when i, when I was younger the worst hmm. I, I guess the worst is like the fans, I guess, compare you to a w, like a former WWE star or a current one. And I want, I, and this is my thing. I want to be remembered as, you know, 
Billy Rock's pin, not Eugene. Mm. No, again, no offense to Eugene. Right, right. He was right. he was great when he was in WWE, but I want to be remembered as my own thing. And I just think like so. It's not it's not all fans. It's just some fans just can't compare the indie guys to um, WWE people. And, and that's I mean, across, sometimes... And, and not even just your character. That's across the board. Yeah, that's across they're, the board. They're just and like, some, well, he's no Rock. Well, he's no Dean Ambrose. He's no this guy. Right. right. And, and, like, I understand that could, that could be taken as a compliment because mm-hmm. uh, obviously they're the best of the best or in the right. WWE and everything. But at the same time, you still want to be your own thing. Mm-hmm. Remember it as you, not someone else. So... Absolutely. All right. So, um, of course, show up with IWC. Where else? Where, uh, at this point, where can people generally find you uh, promotion-wise and online? Um, what, like social media? Or? Social media and like what, where, who you're wrestling with in the future or anything like that you want to throw out there? Um, well, social media, it's Billy Ruxpin on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's all the same thing, which is good that no one else has my name. <laughs> uh <laughs> Oh, I actually have a funny story. There's actually a bunny on Instagram called Billy Ruxpin. And there's more pictures of the bunny uh, than me. <laughs> wait, 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 like a real, a real bunny? Like a bunny, like an actual rabbit. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> I typed in, it was a hashtag Billy Ruxpin. Yeah. And then it was just like, picture of me, and then bunny, 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 bunny. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. That needs to be worked in somewhere. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm like I'm not a rabbit. You could have a rabbit mascot. I could think oh. think the British Bulldogs I, with Matilda. Adam lives. Adam, okay, there's that. <laughs> Wait, Billy Ruxpin could be an Adam, like a part of the uh, uh, Rosebuds. He could. He could yeah. very well have been like. You, you, that's there's a storyline right there. You know, you're like the rejected rosebud or something like that. You know? Yeah, it's like especially, you see me right there, and it's just like a little blip of somebody that you can't really say. Especially, especially if, especially if like you know, that, now we have to get Adam Rose at a night of the superstars just to do this. Uh, but, <laughs> do, do you remember him? You remember? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. still doing the Adam Rose thing. I know out in the Indies. So. Oh, really? Uh, he was on uh, Cole Cabana's podcast like a month or two ago. Uh, okay. uh, talking about probably a little longer actually um but i guess so but uh yeah uh what, what, what is we got a message from producer missy imaginary friend with the imaginary friend bunny oh god <laughs> there you go and it goes deeper down the rabbit hole um <laughs> uh puns hey you can tell <laughs> check out matches with billy ruxpin over on indie wrestling.us and i was trying to remember you're not part of the stomp out cancer pre-show match i don't think right no i no. was i i wanted to go that's right uh, but i had right oh it was, it was right after the lego death match yeah. I, I had to go to work <laughs> i had to go to work i was sore oh, it no. was it was awful <laughs> oh no uh but go check him out it, it's a, a fun time whenever he's on the show and uh, i i, I I'm always happy when I see him on the car. He's like, "We're gonna have Billy on here. You know, we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have a really fun moment on here with the the STDs and and Billy Rockspin." So, thank you so much for joining us here on Indie Mayhem Show, sir. No, no problem. Thank you very much for having me. All right, and of course, you guys can check out everything WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to the show and keep an eye on the Facebook events for when we have uh, people coming in all throughout August and September here, and uh, a lot of great names from the area. We got. A really high praise from Marcus Mann about this being the killer lineup that we've uh, we pulled together here. Uh, just the up and comers, uh, past, present, and future of uh, wrestling in the geez, within probably 400 miles, I guess, uh, of where we're at here in Pittsburgh. So go check it out. Thank you everybody for that's been supporting the show, sending us a lot of good vibes about what we've been doing with the show and the guests that we've had on in the past uh, uh, over the past year over the past years really and uh and thank you everybody that's been a part of this uh we'll see you guys next time until then make sure you support indie wrestling this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com